everyone hope you're all well so there's a number of things i want to bring into this video um i think the issues are extremely important um so bear with me it might be a little bit longer but i i do think it's important to cover everything you know some people say that uh, a good youtube video is very snappy and straight to the point and it's like three or four minutes or something but i just find that um the things i want to talk about just can't be covered in three or four minutes or five minutes so um that's the approach i take uh you know feel free to multitask uh have a coffee uh i don't know you can't read while you're listening to someone but um feel free to multitask because there are a few things i want to talk about here now uh just a disclaimer um to youtube i'm not promoting any reckless conspiracy theories i'm not contradicting uh, official medical um, information. It's kind of ridiculous. I have to make that disclaimer. Uh, but I, I I made a video similar to this before, and it actually got taken down, and I got warned about it by YouTube, um, because they falsely said that I was spreading conspiracy theories. In fact, in that video, I was doing the exact opposite. I was criticizing um, the anti-vaxxer lobby uh, or protesters for want of a better term because i don't agree with their approach and i don't agree with all their arguments um and youtube seemed to think i was advocating them but regardless whether i was with them or against them the fact that um you know a powerful company like this can censor people for having an opinion is quite concerning um i think it should suffice to have a link uh, to information. So, for example, um, if you have a state broadcaster, uh, as it stands, YouTube has a little uh, notification saying, for example, RT is um, funded by the Russian state, uh, CGTN is funded by the Chinese state, the BBC is the British broadcaster, etc. I think that's sufficient. But I think if someone is making a conspiracy theory, it's sufficient to just balance it out with a disclaimer on the video. But I think censoring people for, I think that's only going to fuel those sort of theories anyway. And to anyone who's getting the wrong idea about my stance on that, I'm not of the view that every conspiracy theory is nonsense. I don't believe that. I think that there is some credible um, concerns. Uh, but I am obviously against some more outlandish and extreme ones. Um, like the world's run by reptilian shapeshifters and... Uh, Bill Gates is secretly trying to, you know, inject us all with uh, microchips and that sort of stuff. But um, I've just watched a video, um, GB News, Mark Dolan. It was a very powerful message. And he had a mask on and basically he was saying, it's only a mask. It's only forever. And if you watch the video, you'll see the point of it. It, it was very powerful, I thought. And it gets into an issue that we are having in this country and around the world. It's not just this country. Australia, certainly, um, they've really experienced this. But other parts of Europe as well and around the world. Um, nothing in my lifetime has affected the world as much as coronavirus. Nothing. Um, other things have had their impact. Um you know, 9-11 had an impact on the aviation industry, the Arabian Spring, um, the war on terror. These sort of things all had geopolitical effects, the rise of China, the rise of social media. But I don't think any single event has had such a sweeping uh, effect on so many people as this pandemic in my lifetime. Um, another big one, of course, is the fall of the, the Berlin Wall and the end of the Cold War. And all the aftermath of that but i i think that um two years is a long time it's been roughly two years now or coming up to two years and the situation in england is that the masks are once again being mandated but i think now we're at a point it's sort of a turning point because um some big businesses are now refusing to impose this on customers iceland for example is refusing to do that um and shops are sort of taking on their own discretion now um an acquaintance of mine who works in the health service posted um something on his social media the other day 
Um, I think he's in in an ambulance driver or he's in the ambulance service and he, he showed all the overalls, the um, PPE that medical staff wear. And the point he was making with his post was, well, um, you know, why are people complaining about the masks that we go through? And I was tempted to reply um, because I didn't like the insinuation. Um, I didn't because I didn't want the drama of it back and forth on it. But um, we are now getting into a, a sort of schism in this country, a bit like Brexit, you know, leave or remain, um, a bit like other divisive issues. But um, this one really gets taps into basic civil liberty. Now, I'm double vaccinated and I do wear my mask in crowded places, but I think there are legitimate questions here. I mean, the whole point about the vaccination drive was to get back to normal. That was the message that the government and its medical advisors were sending out. Get vaccinated, save lives, we'll get back to normal. Well, most people are vaccinated. And some of the hefty fines that are being threatened. Um, when does this end? Are we going to say that every time there's a new variant, we're going to uh, have more restrictions? And I have to say, it kind of um, frustrates me when people downplay that it's just a mask. Well, it is, and most people can can wear it. You know, there are some exemptions. Uh, people with serious breathing problems, children. Um, I understand rape survivors for obvious reasons because if they were, for example, in their ordeal, uh, their attacker sort of covered their mouth, that that can produce PTSD. Um, you know, to have a restriction on the breathing like that. Uh, I don't like masks. I find them stuffy, uh, uncomfortable. And I do question the logic of someone who is sort of totally okay with this. Like they just downplay, oh, it's only a mask. It's, it's only forever. This notion that we just continue to wear these things with no end in sight is um, sinister, quite frankly. Freedom is something we value very deeply in this country. And I think this is one area where it's um, frankly under threat. I don't see any um, ethical argument for continuing to impose this at this point. Maybe this winter, because uh, we could have a riot in flu cases and coincides with the pandemic. Um, but I really, really believe in 2022, I think we just have to discard all these things, all of them. Because if we don't, when do they end? When, when do these things end? When do, you know, people might say it's only a mask, but this is the United Kingdom. You know, having something on your face that um, restricts normal breathing, that restricts normal communication, I mean, actually, they are a communication barrier. I frequently find I have to lift it up in order to talk to people. They can't hear. Maybe it's my accent that they can't always hear what I'm saying, and I can't always hear what they're saying. But you know, I I wear it. But I do think we're going to get to a critical point where, um, I think the pendulum somewhat sw swung. I think in the beginning, most people were kind of um going by the guidelines and they were uh, sort of in good faith saying, okay, well, this is an exceptional circumstance. We'll follow it uh, and we'll come out of this thing. But that was, you know, that was last year when we were in lockdown and earlier this year. So almost two years now. I mean, what if we have a new variant in January? Are we going to say, oh, well, that's a spring lockdown or that is a spring mask mandate. When does this end? That's a very important question. And I do question those who seem to have no problem with this having no end in sight. It's very um, concerning. And you know, my my friend, my acquaintance, um, I understand he has a certain perspective. He's a frontline worker. He's in, you know, in the ambulance service. And 
I don't like criticizing people in, in the medical industry because I think they are under enormous pressure. But they also have to understand that people aren't just whining. People have legitimate concerns about civil liberty. And find there for some many totalitarians out there who want no end in sight. This has to end. That's one big area. But if we look at other things um, in society in recent years, I think there has been a gradual erosion of freedom of expression. Um, I think when we look at hate crime legislation, when we look at how that is policed, firstly, some of it's um, vague. For example, Nottinghamshire Police uh, brought in a law against misogyny. Now, misogyny means hatred of women and girls. I think absolutely there should be laws against uh, violence against women. There should be laws against sexual harassment. That's all common sense to any decent person. But how do you legislate something like misogyny? Because what could be misogyny to one person is simply a hated argument to another. You know, you imagine a scenario, a husband or a boyfriend or a brother or any other relative maybe is, you know, he's having a hated row and he calls his girlfriend or wife uh, the B word. That's not pleasant, but should he be punished for that? I mean, if she calls him a name as well, I mean, it's, this is something that concerns me when you have poorly defined legislation um, that's rife for abuse. It's arrived to be um, sort of weaponized. I think one area we need to look at is how the trans lobby is really, really pushing for cancel culture and for, um, for example, if you look, use the wrong pronoun, that's considered a hate crime. As it stands in this country, that isn't legislated yet. But mark my words, they will try to do that. They have in Canada. Um, by lay, I'm talking about the militant trans lobby not talking about all trans people. Um, there's a hysterical attitude from, I have to say, there is a left-right divide on this. I mean, it's not that the right aren't uh, also censorious in their own way. Anything to do with the military or the royal family, the right can, you know, frankly get their knickers in a twist. But I think overall, the left is more likely to censor and restrict things overall. Um, and one thing I find very disturbing, one, one thing I really loathe about woke ideology is it, it dresses itself up in this sort of facade of, oh, we're all about compassion. We're all about understanding and, um, you know, understanding injustice and fighting injustice and equality. But when you strip it back, really, it's about control. And there's a very nasty bullying streak to it. You know, someone makes a mistake, for example, they say something they regret, that should suffice. Um, but no, they have to be destroyed. Um, it's There's something very, very unpleasant about that. But um, I love the way that sort of left-wing school of thought, and I'm not talking about all left-wing people here, but that particular school of thought, it weaponizes um, concepts like racism and sexism. So... If you um, if you condemn Islamic extremism, for example, they will say, oh, you're pandering to the far right against Muslims. No, you're condemning Islamic extremism. If you criticize a particular woman, then you're a misogynist. You know, if you don't fully endorse movements, if you say that Black Lives Matter, for example, fails to tackle black on black crime, if you say that Me Too goes too far and... Um, conflates sexual abuse and harassment with sometimes situations that might be innocent or you know totally vilifies men before they've even been tried in a court of law if you take those positions then you're deemed to be against you're against it so if you criticize me too oh well therefore you must be okay with women being sexually harassed or if you criticize black lives matter then you're you're okay with police brutality it's these sort of vindictive dogmatic black and white um conclusions i really have a problem with you're with us or you're against us in that sense now some things are um obvious if someone's taken a very explicit position then you know they're setting themselves up to be criticized if someone for example goes out of the way to defend the chinese or russian government um 
they can't complain about being called a stooge of the Russian or Chinese government. So I do believe that if people take controversial positions, they can not expect a response. But I staunchly believe in freedom of expression as well. Unless someone is making explicit threats or engaging in a vindictive bullying campaign against an individual. And again, this is an area that's misconstrued because, you know, what one person considers trolling, another person might consider legitimate criticism. If an MP, for example, if they get some angry comments on their Facebook page, is that abuse or is that legitimate criticism of a person in power? I take the view that if you're in a position of power, you're a legislator, you're making decisions that impact people's lives, you have to have tough skin and you have to accept that some people will not like your decisions. Now, clearly, if people are making threats, that is crossing a line. Um, but basically, I think people should have the freedom to criticise. You know, I've been criticised. I've had some quite unpleasant messages. And what I do is I just fight fire with fire. You know, they attack me, I, I attack them back. It's, but I'm not going to run to the uh, Facebook police on unless they're, you know, messing with my account or something. Um, there's a dangerous relation with sensitivities and um, and compassion because compassion's a good thing. You know, it's good to be considerate and kind and thoughtful. That's that's fine. But when sensitivities are used to shackle other people's opinions, it's very concerning. I do believe that freedom is under attack in this country. Now, I don't believe that we're on par with totalitarian states just yet. But I'll be honest, I used to be a little bit defensive about this when people spoke about, oh, Britain's turning into a dictatorship or something like that. I'd be a little bit defensive and I'd say, oh, we're nothing like that. Look at China, look at North Korea. And obviously there's no comparison. There isn't. Nevertheless, the thing about freedom and the thing about freedom of conscience, freedom of religion and freedom not to believe and the freedom to criticise religion and all the rest of it, we can never ever take these things for granted. We can never just assume that we will have it set in stone because when legislation is passed, it's very hard to turn back. Um, and I am concerned about how people's opinions are distorted. So if someone says that uh, they think there should be tough controls on immigration or they're concerned about people not integrating, and then some idiot says that they're they're pandering to the far right. Um, well, that's the right. They have a right to that opinion, but then they they're not content with just criticizing. They want to censor. They want to cancel that person. When a woman like J.K. Rowling um, takes a position of saying biology matters, and she's immediately hounded by the trans lobby, feminists hound men if they you know don't agree with feminists a hundred percent. They hound them as being misogynists and, and so on. Um, I'm sure there's many other examples. Uh, I consider myself a pretty tolerant person, but I don't think we should tolerate intolerance. I don't think, for example, that we should be okay with an Islamist ideology in this country. It doesn't belong in this country. In Pakistan, a uh, Sri Lankan man has just been lynched, burned alive, absolute barbarism. The Imran Khan's ordered an investigation. He's enabled the Islamists. And some of this mentality is being exported into Britain. And that teacher um, received death threats. The teacher in West Yorkshire, Batley, West Yorkshire, received death threats for a lesson he gave on blasphemy. Then, um, you know, the silence of Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer was deafening. I appreciate they can't comment on every single case. Something like that, a teacher in the United Kingdom being forced into hiding a month after a French teacher is beheaded or a few months afterwards. I mean, if I was a leader, I would absolutely be vocal on something like that. I'd be supporting the teacher, roundly condemning the Islamists responsible and calling for uh, police action against them. I'd have them deported if they aren't British citizens. 
if they are British citizens, I'd have them de-radicalised. I mean, there's a lot going on in society, and I think that it is so, so, so important the reasonable people stand up for common sense. Now, the other side of this, of course, I'm talking a lot about freedom, there's also responsibility. So, for example, the freedom to protest means that you have responsibility not to hurt other people. I've been pretty vocal about my thoughts on Insulate Britain, and it really frustrates me that um, there are commentators basically justifying them and saying, no, all oh, the protesters, and if the government takes action against them, they're taking away their freedom to protest. But the big lie with this is that they are not being jailed, some of them have been jailed, for protesting. They're being jailed because they're breaking the law. And this one judge said, rightly, causing it, you know, intolerable stress for thousands of people. The arrogance and the self-righteousness and the selfishness of that kind of protester um, is really galling. But to be honest, I don't think Insulate Britain can be negotiated with. I think they're just extremists. I think they're fanatics. Um, I mean, they've been clear that they're going to keep doing it. They've been clear that they don't want to listen to anyone else's point of view. They're extremists. They're zealots. So they're going to say what they're going to say. But the real problem is they're apologists. And you see, this is the other side of it. My approach to this video was to talk about freedom, but also responsibility. And if you use your freedom to impact the peace of other people to the point where it's intolerable, you know, if you think you have a right to break the law, just like that, if you don't agree with the law, then campaign to have it changed. But it's, you know, like George Monbiot and others, right in Guardian, um, they're, they're just distorting the situation. Insulate Britain activists are not being jailed for protesting. They're being jailed for their criminality, for the fact that they're putting lives in danger. Um, James O'Brien's another one that's come out and, you know, defended them. Um, maybe they think they're being edgy, but it's... Um, I, I would call that, actually, the tyranny of the minority. Because the thing about tyranny doesn't just come from governments. It can come from individuals. It can come from movements. And I do believe that actually Britain is a pretty totalitarian movement. They're basically saying, it's our way, or it's, you know, we demand this, we demand that. And, you know, they even had the arrogance to ask the public not to drive. As if people could just disrupt their their plans for a minority like that. Um, sometimes I do feel concerned about the direction of this country. I really do. And I know it isn't just this country, but, um, you know, it's our country, so this is what we focus on. So in summary, I, um, I think freedom is a precious thing, and I think it's sacrosanct that our culture and our values but I do think it's under threat. And I think this pandemic has been a test. I mean, it's been a tragedy in terms of the lives lost. You know, um, 140,000 plus people. Never lose sight of that. But do we, do, do we use a tragedy to justify constantly eroding freedoms? And some people might say um, mask wearing isn't a restriction. Well, it is actually. Why? Because it's not, um, it's not what life was before. It's, you know, it's not normal state of being. Having this covering on your face all the time, or mandating that it's there's no end in sight. That's what I think people find so frustrating. We were told, you know, just follow the guidelines and this will come to an end. Get vaccinated, it will come to an end. And again, YouTube, I'm not promoting any reckless conspiracy theories. But um, I really, really think we can never, ever take freedom for granted. And freedom can be assaulted by government, institutions, and individuals. 
um, and we need to fight for it. Certainly compared to many parts of the world, we do have relative freedom. We do have, you know, I'm making this video freely, assuming YouTube wasn't sent to me. Um, so, you know, I can freely criticize the government without fear of a knock on the door. So it's not so much that we can't criticize the government in this country. That's one of, actually, that's one of the easiest things to do. Rather, it's that there is kind of this creeping authoritarianism by proxy. Now, authoritarianism makes sense in some areas. Crime. I'm pretty authoritarian when it comes to uh, justice. I think people who terrorize society should face consequences. I'm conservative. I'm authoritarian in that area. What I'm talking about is the freedom of the majority, of decent people, to live their lives in peace. And part of that means having basic freedoms. And mandating masks with no end in sight, that is an assault on freedom. And people who downplay it, I ask them directly, do you want no end in sight? Do you really want a situation where we are still mandated to wear masks at the cost of a hefty fine? You know, at a time when many people are already having financial anxieties. Do you want that with no end in sight? Is that honestly your, your outlook for the future? Because I think that's sinister. And I do think that people are kind of, the, the police can't find everyone, they can't arrest everyone. So there's going to be this kind of attitude in the public, I think. It's just going to kind of, in a very British way, very, just, just refuse. Just, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to keep kowtowing to um, restrictions under threats, you know. Um, So I really, really believe that um, freedom is something we must defend. And to me, that's what freedom is. It's having the widest liberty possible, whilst also having responsibility. I don't believe freedom is you could do whatever you want. Some libertarians and anarchists kind of fear that way. No, it has responsibility to other people. And the likes of Insulated Britain are not, they are not freedom fighters. They are not. Uh, martyrs. Maybe they are to themselves, but this idea that 20 years from now we'll look back and thank them is absurd. If we have more flooding, you know, that will be um, a reminder of the problem we face from climate change. But I think that this idea that, you know, blocking an ambulance or stopping a loved one, seeing the relative in 2021, people are further down the line going to say, oh, well, they were right all along. It doesn't matter that I sat in my car for six hours and I couldn't get my sick mother or father to hospital. They were right. Well, I should have listened to them. That's extremely naive. And another thing, I'll quickly round up with this. Analogies of the suffragettes are ignorant. Um, the fact of the matter is, the militant suffragettes, you know, those who planted bombs, put lives at risk, they were seen as terrorists at the time and they technically were terrorists. But more importantly, this idea that that is what got women the vote is a distortion. There's a lot of things that got women the vote. Certainly a major component of that was the changing labour force in World War I because with men on the front, women done jobs that were traditionally um, done by men, like coal mining and um, uh, I think shopkeeping and a lot of other things that were more the province of men and that changed the dynamic because women showed that they did. Obviously they could do it just as well as men. So. That was a major component as well. Um, but this idea, oh, well, the suffragettes planted bombs in letterboxes, so that justifies me gluing my hand to the road. It's stupid. Uh, and it's also a distortion of history. Anyway, I will uh, I'll round this up, but I think the issues are extremely important. If, um, if there's any chance this video was taken down and I receive a warning, goodness knows why, um, that will just be chilling. It'll be very frustrating, but will also be very, um, I will have questions about what big media companies are doing, what big social media companies are doing, if that's the case. And thanks for watching. Stay safe. And yeah, we can never, ever take freedom for granted.